How's it going, everyone? Today, we're going to be starting off a new series where we look at how to do some image processing in C++. We've got a basic project set up here. We're going to start off today by setting everything up and creating an image structure that can hold image data. And then in future videos, we'll look at how to manipulate that image data in some cool ways, and we'll have different effects. We'll start real small with maybe some things like grayscale, uh, just really basic stuff like that, and then we'll move into some really cool effects that you can you can do with code. So let's get right into it. All right, so we're going to start off by creating some new files in here. We're going to want an image.h, and we're also going to make a C++ file, of course. Okay, and we want that to be included in here. So let's start writing this struct in here. So this is just going to be called image, and it's going to have a couple things in it, right? It's going to have all of the picture data, which is just going to be one byte, right? So u int h is one byte. Uh, it's going to have a bunch of it, so we need a pointer. So we're going to set that to null to begin with. Right then, just to keep track of everything, we're going to have the size of the data stored as well. So we'll set that in the constructor, but it'll start off with zero. We're going to have a width, a height, and then the number of channels. The number of channels is how many pixel or how many color values per pixel. So RGB is three, RGBA is four. All right. We're also going to have some constructors and some other stuff. So let's start doing that. We're going to have a constructor that takes in just a file name. So that's going to be just a string, a const char pointer. Right? Then we can also, we'll give ourselves the ability to create just a blank image, a black image that we could manipulate possibly. Uh, we might not actually end up using this, but it could be useful, so we'll go ahead and create that. We pass in width, a height, and a number of channels. And we also want the ability to copy over images, so we're going to want to make a copy constructor as well. And that's just going to look like this. You just pass a constant reference to another image. Oops, my MG. There we go. And then, of course, our deconstructor. All right. Oops. Okay. On top of that, we're going to have functions that will read in from a file. Uh, this is basically what the constructor does. Uh, the constructor is just going to call this function, but we're just going to put it in a separate function just for organization. And then we also want the ability to, to write as well to some to some location, to some file. So that's what that's for right there. Uh, so before we go any further, let us let me explain to you what I have right here. I have these two files, stb underscore image h and image write. These I just got from the internet. Just go ahead and look up this file name and you will find it. It's basically just a header file, uh, header, a library contained in one header file. And it has functions for reading and writing to various types of images. As you can see, uh, all these people contributed to support all these different file types. That's great. We're not going to be using all of them. We just want to look at the, the usage and everything. And if you read through this, uh, it says you need to define some of these bad boys right here. So we're going to start with that in our image.c++ file. So we want to define uh, stb underscore image underscore implementation, define uh, stb underscore image underscore write underscore implementation. Cool. And then we're actually going to include those header files in this C++ file. And now I know a lot of times when you include other files, you would think to do it in the .h file, but for some reason, uh, that does not seem to work. But it does work when you put it in here. And I'm not one to ask questions, so we're just going to we're going to include everything in here. So image.h include stb image. Oops. And we'll get the other one in here as well. Stb image right. Okay, now that that's all set up, let's start creating all of the functions that we have in here. So I'm just going to take this, copy this over to here. We're going to put image in front of all this. Oops, I really don't need that one. Go ahead and put uh, 
these bad boys. There we go. Okay. And we've got all of our functions to start off with. Let's uh, <clears throat> let's start by with this with this destructor right here. This is the easiest. This is just we just want to delete. Or sorry, there's actually a function for this. It's stbi underscore image underscore free. So this is just gonna clean up all the data for you. So you want to make sure you call this when the image gets destructed. And all of these, uh, all the documentation for these is actually in the comments up here. So if you look for usage, you will find basic usage. Here's stbi image free, and then here's stbi image load, which is how we actually load a file or an image from a file. And these are pretty much the only functions that you need. And I think it might be the only function that's in the library, but it's very simple, really nice to use. So let's go ahead and in here, when we get the file name, all we want to do is call our read function, right? But we want to be a little bit smarter than that. As you can see here, we're returning a bool. Oh shoot, hang on. These need to be over here. There we go. These are returning a boolean, so that's whether or not this was successful. So we'll say, if you read it correctly, we will print out uh, read the file name. Um, so we'll just do something like that. I'm making a lot of typos right now. And then otherwise, we'll just say that it failed. Now that we have that set up, uh, we are using printf, so we're going to need to add just in here that we're going to include um, C, S, C standard input output, is what that stands for. And since we are using the uint8 as well and the size t and everything, we want to include standard int h. And just to make sure everything's working, we can go over here and run our make file and just see that we're all, oh yeah. Need to get that. Make sure we're all good here. We got some warnings. End of null void. That's fine. Okay, we haven't made those yet. Okay, so let's give ourselves some space here. Let's go down to the read. Let's work on this now. So read. All we really need to do is call in the the stbi load right here. So let's just go ahead and actually copy this and put it in here. So we put in our file name. The X and the Y is just going to be the width and the height, right? So this is going to fill in those values for us. N is the number of channels. And zero, we just want to leave zero. If you look at, at this, it says uh, N will be the number that it would have been if you said zero. Um, basically, you can force the number of channels. As you can see right here, you can force four channels. Uh, but we don't want to force anything. We'll just leave it just like that, OK? And then this function will fail if it if data is null, basically. So if we, we want to return true if data is not null. So return data does not equal null. That, that's all we need for the read. So read is super, super easy. So let's go back up to our constructors. We have this one done already. We have this test image in here as well that we're gonna we're gonna mess around with in a little bit. Let's go ahead and make this next constructor now. So here, one thing I also am realizing is we need to set the size as well. The size is the width times the height times the channels, right? Because it's one byte per channel. That's how big your image is. So there's your size. And we can do that same thing down here. Size is that, and then we'll say data is new. Array bytes size. There you go. So that's all we need for this constructor right here. This will make a bunch of zeros, so it'll be all black. It's exactly what we want. Um, but we also uh, want to throw this an initialize list right here. Oops. There we go. That's all set up. Okay. Now we just need to get this copy constructor done. All we need to do here is we're actually going to call this other constructor right here, just like this. So the width we want to be image.width, the height we want to be height, same with channels. Um, 
Um, oh, and actually what we can do is since this already handles all that, we can just call image like that and then pass in everything. Okay, cool. Now that we've done that, we just want to make sure that we copy over all of the data from that other image into here. So we want to put it into data. The source is image.data and then image.size. We could use either one, but it doesn't matter. I'll just use this. Okay, cool. So now that we've done that, we have all of our constructors done. We just need to create this write function. And now if we look at our write usage in here, you can see there are five write functions for all the different file types that you can write to. And we don't really care about all these file types, but it would be cool to you know maybe do PNG or JPG or for some reason bitmap, who knows, whatever. So we're going to give ourselves that option and make it nice and easy for ourselves. And so what we want to do is we want some kind of function that will check what the extension is, right? So let's let's first set up in here like an image type structure, okay? Or sorry, an, an enumeration. That's what I meant to say. And then this is just going to have the different types in it. So like PNG, JPG, what else do we care about? We'll do BMP and we'll do TGA as well. So this is just 0, 1, 2, 3, right? And now what we can do is we can create a function that returns an image type uh, that's called like get file type. And we'll just take in the uh, file name. Cool, so let's take this function and start making that. Enjoy right here. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is we're just going to get the extension first. That's done just like this. This function is going to give us the extension. It's really easy, one liner. Now that we have the extension, uh, we first want to make sure that it, you know, actually is a valid file name, or at least can try to figure out what the extension is. So. This will return a null pointer if it didn't find a dot in here. Uh, so we want to make sure that it is not a null pointer before we start messing with it so our program doesn't crash. And then we can just use string compare to see if the extension is matching with, with any of the values. We have to include the dot actually because this is going to include the dot. So just like this, we want to make sure it equals zero. If it equals zero, that means it's dot PNG. So then we're going to go in here and then just return PNG, just like that. And then we can copy this for all the other ones. Make sure you put else if JPG, JPG, uh, else if, what was that one? BMP, BMP, TGA. All right, and then just in case for some reason, they put something random, we'll just force PNG. Um, and actually, what we should do is just put that outside here. That way, if there was some issue with the extension, it's just going to turn into a PNG anyway, which is, which is fine. So now that we have that, we can go in here and we can say image type uh, type equals get file type file name. Okay, and then now we can use a switch statement to go through the type. So if it's a PNG, we want to uh, we want to use our our image load, but we want to also keep track of if this function was successful. And so if we look at our usage here, you can see it returns an integer, and that integer is going to tell us whether or not it was successful. So let's go ahead and just make an integer called success and leave that undefined. That way when we go in here, we can uh, grab case here. We can say success equals and then our function. So it's just st, I'm actually just going to copy it from here. It's a lot easier. There we go. Get rid of that. So we pass in our file name. That goes right here. And we have width, the height. Comp is the number of channels. And then this is our data. And then the stride in bytes is just going to be the width times the number of channels. 
for PNG. PNG is the only one that has the stride and bytes. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up and we'll just create the rest of these. Uh, but this is the basic principle right here. Okay, so now that we've got these all pasted in, let me just quickly explain. Uh, like I said before, PNG is the only one with a stride, but uh, JPEG has this, this number. And that's just going to be 0 through 100. So if I go ahead and look at this right here, you can see at the usage again. Right here, there's a quality. And so that's just going to be, like I said, a number 0 through 100. We're just going to give it full quality. So now that we have that, this should write everything successfully. We just want to make sure that we return an, an a Boolean if it was actually successful. So we want to return success is not equal to zero. So if it's not zero, it was successful. Otherwise, it had an issue. So we now have all of our things done, I believe. We have all of our constructors and all of our write functions done. So now we just want to make sure it works. So let's go ahead and make sure we got no syntax errors. It looks like we have a little issue with the object file. Let me just clean. OK, so slight hiccup there. That is my issue right there. We have to have these correct, otherwise it's not going to work. Um, so let's go ahead and make that. There we go. Everything is good syntax-wise. Now let's go ahead and make a test here. So we're going to create a new image, a test, and we'll pass in our, our test file name, just like that. And then we'll write this to a new image, a new.png. Then let's also make sure that our copy constructor works. So we'll say copy equals test. And then we'll set all of the i will set the top row of pixels in that image to black. So we'll just say for i, i is less than copy.width times copy.channels. So this is just going to be one row of bytes in the image. And then we'll set the data in there to Let's actually let's make it white. So then this will set the first row to that, and then we'll do copy dot write copy dot png. We can also just really quickly we can test our blank image where we pass it just the size and the channels, and then write that image out. And we'll try writing it to JPG this time. So let's go ahead and run this. There we go. You can see it read test.jpg down here. And here's all of our images. So here's our blank black image. That works perfectly. Here's our copy where the first row is white. If you can, might be kind of hard to see on video, but I can see it pretty well. And then here's our new, same picture, but a PNG. And then here's our original. So everything worked perfectly. So I think we're done for today. Thank you guys for watching. Keep uh, keep following up with our other videos. We'll make some, some really cool stuff happen with this that we've set up today. So hope to see you guys around. Bye.